You've heard about hypo-bearded dragons, and probably leucistic bearded dragons, and even citrus bearded dragons. But let's be serious. The question you're asking yourself? What the heck is my dragon, and what are all these different things? So I'm going to answer those today during this bearded dragon genetics video. In order to talk about genetics, we have to discuss DNA. Everyone knows that's the base where your genetics start. But your DNA is really coiled around all of these proteins, and then it's coiled up even more. And as it continues to coil and squiggle around, that's where we get your genes, your chromosomes. So that's where all your genetic information is, in a bunch of DNA curled up in a chromosome. So people have 23 pairs of chromosomes, or 46 chromosomes in total. This spot here, this is a locus. It's basically the location of one gene. Well, what is a gene? A gene is just a section of DNA that codes for a specific trait. So basically it can code for eye color, it can code for how tall you're going to get, but first we have to understand the basics of genetics in order to get into more depth about how these genes work. Let's start with some basic terminology. Allele. What is an allele? It's basically one of two or more alternative forms of a gene. So for example, in mice, uh, capital B codes for uh, black eyes, and a lowercase b is for red-eyed mice. These are some different forms of an eye color gene. These are two different alleles. Like I discussed before, you have your locations of your gene. So each chromosome here, each pair, has two alleles. Each chromosome has one, and then your pair has two. And so those two alleles together, that's what we call a genotype. Now a genotype is the pair of alleles for a certain gene. Going back to our mice, the genotype capital B, capital B is for a black-eyed mice, while the genotype uh, little b, little b is for a red-eyed mouse. You'd find these genotypes for those different characteristics. Now moving on, those characteristics have a name as well, and that's called the phenotype. Basically, the physical characteristics caused by the genotype. Back to our mice example again. So having the genotype big B, big B causes the phenotype of black eyes. Having the genotype little b, little b causes the phenotype of red eyes. Now it is possible to have one big B and one little b alleles, and what happens when that comes along? Well, that's the matter of dominance. Dominance is an allele that, when paired with any other, will determine the phenotype. Uh, let's go with our mice again. So we know that the genotype big B, big B is the phenotype of black eyes. Little b, little b gives us a phenotype of red eyes. But what happens when we have a big B and a little b? Well, the big B is dominant, the black eyes is dominant here, so we'll end up with a black-eyed um, offspring. When you have two of the same allele, this is called being homozygous, such as big B, big B, or little b, little b. When you have two different alleles, that's called heterozygous, hetero being different, homo being same. Um, homozygous recessive, when you have two of the recessive gene, the gene that when paired with the other one will not show, and homozygous dominant when you have both dominant alleles like big B, big B. When we breed two different animals together, we often want to know what's the possibilities of which genotypes or phenotypes coming out in their offspring. So we use this thing called a Punnett square, which will show us our chances of getting certain genotypes or phenotypes from parents. So if our first parent here is a heterozygous for the black eyes, so it's a black eyed mouse, but it's a carrier of the red eyed gene. That means that it can pass on the red-eyed gene. And then we have our red-eyed mouse here, who is obviously homozygous recessive. Uh, it's the only way to have a phenotypical red-eyed mouse. And so basically what we're going to do here is we're going to move the different letters into the squares. Um, we'll move the little b's across here from the red-eyed parent, and the two different uh, alleles down for the heterozygous. Um, for this first square, we're going to have a big b, little b, which is a heterozygous offspring. Um, we did that by moving the big B down and the little b across into that square. Uh, we're just going to do the same thing for all of them. You can see the paths uh, laid out here. Um, and the genotypes that will be in there will be the same colors as the paths from which they came. As you can see here. See the little b's 
go across, and then the heterozygous, the two different alleles go down. And that's how we got those. Now these offspring results, these aren't what the offspring are actually going to be. These are the chances of them having uh, certain genotypes and certain phenotypes. So as you can see here, uh, we have two squares out of the four that have heterozygous for the black-eyed trait, big B, little b. So that means 50% are going to have the chance to be heterozygous, or big B, little b, um, which means they will have black eyes. The other two are both homozygous recessive, little b, little b. So that means there is another 50% chance that the offspring could be homozygous recessive or have um, a red-eyed phenotype. So if we bred these two mice together, this heterozygous black-eyed mouse and this homozygous recessive red-eyed mouse, um, half of the babies uh, are ideally going to have red eyes and half are going to have black eyes but are going to be a carrier of the red-eyed gene. When I say carrier, I mean that they're heterozygous. They have one black-eyed trait and one red-eyed trait, and so there's the potential of passing the red-eyed trait to their offspring, as you could see in this cross that we just did here. Now, not all alleles follow the simple one is dominant and one is recessive pattern. There's some that get a little more complicated, but they're not that hard to understand once you get a hold from them. So first we're going to look at co-dominance. Codominance is defined as having a heterozygous genotype that results in both alleles being expressed phenotypically. Um, for an example, let's look at some cows. Um, in cows, the red color of their fur is dominant, and the white color of the fur is also dominant. So if we did a cross between these two, let's pull up a Punnett square, we put the two dominant alleles for red on top and the two dominant alleles for white on the side, and cross them, we're going to have four offspring that are going to be capital R, capital W. So what does this produce? This produces a Rowan cow. It's a cow with both red and white uh, phenotypically shown. Um, so in normal dominance, what happens is you have your big B allele and your little B allele, and the big B allele wins out against the little B, meaning if you have a heterozygous genotype, uh, big B, little B, for our red-eyed mice and black-eyed mice, uh, the heterozygous genotype is going to result in a black-eyed mouse because the black is dominant over the red uh, allele. However, in co-dominance, what we have is um, both are dominant, and so they kind of tie out in first place. Uh, since they tie out, you're both they're both going to show, so our red and our white are both going to be present in our heterozygous um, red, white, or Rowan offspring. So it's going to have both red and white. Think co-ed, both genders are playing, co-dominance, both phenotypes. Next up is what we call incomplete dominance. Now this is where the phenotype of the heterozygous genotype is different than both phenotypes of homozygous. So it's often going to be between the two. For example, let's look at snapdragons. So for our red snapdragons, it's CRCR, CR, white snapdragons, CWCW. CW. So if we cross those, uh, pull up a Punnett square here, we have our CRCR CR at the top, our red snapdragons, CWCW, CW, our whites on the side here. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to have four CRCWs, CR, uh, and that's going to be our pink snapdragons. It's going to have a phenotype that's in between the two different uh, homozygous phenotypes, red and white. Um, again, on the victory scale here for incomplete dominance, uh, neither of the two win out. They both kind of just come in a mediocre place. Neither of them win first. So when we have a heterozygous here for our red and white snapdragons, uh, it's going to be somewhere in between. They're both going to have a little bit of say, uh, so they're going to have a pink offspring here for the heterozygous. Now this next one's going to be really easy compared to the last two. This is multiple alleles. Just like it sounds, basically when there's more than two different alleles, and so there's more than three possible genotypes. Uh, so let's look at an example of that. An example is uh, blood types. So we have our I superscript A is our blood type A allele, uh, I superscript B is our blood type B allele, and our lowercase i, that's our blood type O allele. Uh, positives and negatives get a little bit confusing, so we won't get into that. 
So when you do a Punnett square here, let's say we're crossing uh, someone with blood type A with someone with blood type B. Uh, what you're going to get is you're going to have IA, IB. So that's going to be your AB blood type. Pretty simple. You just look at the superscripts and that's what you get here. AB. Now, let's say we cross our um, homozygous blood type A, our uh, I subscript A, I subscript A, um, superscript, sorry, with uh, our O, which is two lowercase i. What we're going to get is IA little i, and so that's going to be our heterozygous for blood type A. Still blood type A, but there's the possibility of having offspring with blood type O now. Um, same with if you cross a blood type B homozygous with a blood type O, uh, you're going to get the same outcome as you did before. You're going to have your um, IB little i, which is your heterozygous B, again, with the potential of passing down um, O blood to your offspring because you carry the O allele. So that's multiple alleles. Uh, that's the basics of genetics. Uh, it might be a little long, but now you've got a really good understanding of how genetics work uh, and some of the things that aren't so normal and how those work, such as co-dominance, incomplete dominance, and multiple allele. And hopefully that'll help you out when we start discussing specific bearded dragon morphs, colorations, and how all that all comes about in our next video.